Dear friends, in the earlier module, we have discussed about theoretical part, especially the derivations of different formulas for reflection coefficient, VSWR, line impedance, etc. theoretically. We can do the calculations of all these quantities by using formulae in an analytical manner. However, the calculations involve complex algebra and that is the main difficulty or main hurdle in estimating the values of these quantities. Can we not have a simple method which will help us in doing all these calculations with minimization of mathematical labor and ease? The answer is yes. We are having Smith chart as the tool for minimizing the mathematical labor for doing all these calculations. In this module, we are going to study about this graphical aid. It is a very brilliant addition as a computational tool as far as transmission lines are concerned. Of course, there are advanced Smith charts. An example is 3D Smith chart, three-dimensional Smith chart. We will not enter into that jungle, but we will use a simple Smith chart which is called as impedance Z, impedance that is Z Smith chart, avoiding all the other complexities. So, let us see what is the constructional details of this Smith chart. After completing this module, you will be able to use Smith chart for the addition of impedances in series and parallel with each other. Secondly, you will be able to understand the use of Smith chart in determining the impedance of any two terminal network and designing of L type of networks. In addition, you will be able to study how to use Smith chart for determining impedance of a transmission line at a given location. You are familiar with the addition of two resistances in parallel or similar lines. We can add, sorry, cut. <coughs> Slide number 5. We are familiar with addition of two resistances in series or parallel. On similar line, we can add impedances in series or parallel with each other. For example, in the case of two impedances Z1 and Z2 as shown in the figure, we can have the addition of their series combination and parallel combination as shown. The effective impedance of these two impedances when connected in parallel with each other is given by Zp is equal to Z1 in parallel with Z2, which finally comes out to be Yp is equal to Y1 plus Y2, where Y represents the reciprocal of Z and is known as admittance. If the impedances are in parallel, it is advised to add the admittances of the corresponding impedances first and then find the reciprocal of the resultant admittance to obtain the net impedance of the given network. As an example, see the following problem. The required impedance ZAB can be calculated by using the formula ZAB is equal to Z1 in parallel with Z2 is parallel with Z3 and the answer is as shown. The same result can be obtained using admittances as shown. The numerical calculations in both cases are somewhat tedious. Switch chart can be used to obtain the required impedance graphically in a relatively easy manner. We note that the normalized impedance Z is given by Z upon Z0, then normalized admittance, which is the reciprocal of normalized impedance, can be estimated as shown. With this, we obtain Yab is equal to Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3, which is finally the characteristic impedance Z0 multiplied by the reciprocal of Yab. The characteristic impedance Z0 when divided by the sum of the normalized admittances gives the required impedance ZAB. The term characteristic impedance 
is used in connection with transmission line. Here, in connection with electrical networks, let us use the term normalizing impedance Z0. Its value can be selected as per our convenience. We know how to obtain the normalized admittance Y corresponding to a given value of normalized impedance Z using Smith chart. The points representing these values are located at diametrically opposite positions on the VHWR circle. Hence, the solution of the given problem using Smith chart can be found as shown. The sequence and set of calculations will be as shown in the table. Note that there can be a little error in the value obtained from Smith chart. However, it is within tolerable limit. Smith chart can be used to find the impedance of a network in an easy manner, avoiding laborious calculations involving complex algebra. Two principles are followed while using Smith chart for this purpose. Namely, for adding impedances in series, use impedance Smith chart that is Z Smith chart and for adding impedances in parallel, use admittance Smith chart or Y Smith chart or you can obtain admittances corresponding to given impedances using impedance Smith chart also. Let us try to understand these principles with the help of a simple example. Let us suppose that it is needed to add two normalized impedances Z1 is equal to R1 plus Zx1 and Z2 is equal to R2 plus Zx2. Let Z is equal to Z1 plus Z2 equal to R1 plus Zx. The addition of these two normalized impedances can be done using Smith chart by moving along the constant R circle subsequently followed by constant X circle or vice versa in an appropriate sequence. As an example, let Z1 is equal to 0 0.5 plus 2Z and Z2 is equal to 1.5 minus 3Z. Then we can obtain Z is equal to Z1 plus Z2 using Smith chart as follows. First, plot Z1 that is point P1. Here P1 is equal to 0.5 plus 2Z. Second step, from point P1, move horizontally through a distance of 1.5 along x is equal to 2z circle to reach the point P2 with r is equal to 0.5 plus 1.5 that is 2. This gives P2 equivalent to 2 plus 2z. Then from point P2, move vertically through a distance of minus 3z along r is equal to 2 circle to reach the point P3 on x is equal to 2 plus 2z plus minus 3z that is minus j circle. Thus finally, we have P3 is equal to 2 minus j which is the required z. This approach is generally not recommended because the value of r and x in z can be calculated easily as r is equal to r1 plus r2 and x is equal to x1 plus x2. The corresponding point representing z can also be plotted on the speech chart directly. Many a times while specifying the network impedance, the phrase as seen from so and so terminals is used to remove the ambiguity if any an arrowhead can be found to be used indicating the direction of measurement of the network impedance. In this case, one can assume that the current enters the network from one of the two terminals referred in the phrase as seen from so and so terminals and comes out from the other terminals of the network referred to in the phrase as seen from so and so terminals. In diagram 1, ZAB is equal to Z3 plus ZG while in diagram 2, ZAB is Z1 plus Z2. Well friends, we have seen the constructional details about Smith chart. Now by using these provisions made in the Smith chart with different scales like circular scale, horizontal scale, etc., we can determine or estimate the various quantities. 
But the question is, what is the mathematical basis for the Smith chart? And that is very important. And that is why we will discuss about the mathematical basis of Smith chart. Now, while discussing the mathematical basis, we must know some definitions of some quantities. We deal with impedances, admittances, we deal with reactances, resistances, etc. And those are to be normalized to unity by using some special quantity which is called the characterized impedance of the transmission line. So, let us see some important definitions. For example, normalized impedance that is the impedance divided by the characteristic impedance. Similarly, reciprocal of the impedance will be admittance. Then reciprocal of the resistance is called as a conductance. Reciprocal of reactance is called as susceptance. These and all other quantities should be discussed first. We should be quite versatile while using all these terms in studying the mathematical basis. And that is why we will see some important definitions and the quantities involved in mathematical formulation of Smith chart. As an example, suppose we want to find the net impedance z of a network given by z is equal to z1 plus z2 plus z3 in parallel with z4 plus z5 and that too in parallel with z6 plus z7. It is easy to calculate and plot the effective impedances z dash, z double dash and z triple dash of the series combinations of the respective impedances on the Smith chart. However, the next step namely to compute the effective impedance of the parallel combination of z dash, z double dash and z triple dash directly is rather cumbersome. In such a case, if we use the admittances, we can compute z as shown. Note that here we have to simply deal with finding admittances graphically using Smith chart and use the operation of addition. As an example of use of Smith chart to determine the terminal network impedance, consider a simple problem as shown. The problem deals with finding the impedance of a given circuit across its terminals A and B. With normalizing impedance Z0 equal to 50 ohm, the given circuit in the normalized form can be drawn as shown. We can determine ZAB by direct calculations without Smith chart using the following expression. However, a tabular method may lead to obtain the result in a better way to understand the use of both tools namely simple numerical operation of addition say C and use of Smith chart say S. Let us prepare a table showing the operations involved, the results obtained and the computational tools to be used. Such tables can be useful for a beginner in finding impedance of a given network using Smith chart. Observe the entries in the table to be used for solution of the problem under consideration. Thus finally, we have P5, the point P5 equal to Z times cut. Slide number 22. Thus, finally, we have P5, the point representing ZAB, which is 0.4 plus 2Z. Hence, the required impedance across the output terminals ZAB is equal to normalized impedance ZAB into Z0, that is 20 plus 100Z ohm. The location of various points on the speech chart involved in the solution of the problem are as shown. Now, let us consider a simple problem which is as follows. The problem reads like this. The effective impedances of a parallel combination of two impedances Z1 and Z2 is Z. Determine the impedance Z2. The problem can be solved analytically as shown and the answer is Z2 is equal to 22.30 
plus 27.23 J ohm approximately. Use of Smith chart gives the solution in an easy manner. The analysis is normalized form is as shown. Here the sequence of calculations can be described as shown. That is first of all note Z, then Z1, then normalized impedance Z, etc. With suitable value of normalizing impedance Z0, we can obtain the normalized impedances Z1 and Z. Using Smith chart, we can obtain corresponding normalized admittances Y1 and Y, from which the normalized admittance Y2 and hence the normalized impedance Z2 can be determined graphically. Thus, knowing normalized impedance Z2, the actual impedance Z2 can be calculated by multiplying it by the normalizing impedance Z0, the sequence of calculations and the results are as shown. One can verify the results shown in the following calculation using smooth chart. While dealing with simple circuits involving series and parallel combinations of impedances or bridge networks, the special methods like loop current, mesh current, and node voltage methods based on Kirchhoff's laws are generally used. For analysis of these and three phase circuits, we need to use special methods known in literature as pi and t networks. We are familiar with t and pi networks, which are also known as star and delta networks. Use of reactive elements instead of resistive element is preferred because it avoids the loss of power. The interconversion formulae between pi and t networks are as shown. These relations can be highly useful in accelerating the process of finding impedances of a two terminal network. T and pi networks can be used to obtain desired real impedance across its end terminals. As an example, consider the following pi and sorry cut. <coughs> Slide number 29, T and pi networks can be used to obtain desired real impedance across its end terminals. As an example, consider the following pi network. Here it is expected to find the values of L, C1 and C2 which will result in the desired values of impedances across its end terminals A, B and P and Q. Use of many online sources available on the internet can be made for computing the values of the network components. For example, let us suppose that we wish to have ZAB is equal to 20 ohm and ZPQ equal to 100 ohm at frequency F is equal to 10 megahertz. Then the reactive components will have the values as shown. At frequency F is equal to 10 megahertz, we obtain Xc1 is equal to minus 4.56 J ohm, Xc2 that is capacitive reactance of C2 as 14.26 J ohm. With these values, it can be verified that Zab is equal to 20 ohm and Zpq is equal to 100 ohm as desired. In designing of any passive reactive network, we need to find the values of network components, especially capacitance and inductance offering desired impedance. As a revision, let us exercise few calculations related with inductive reactance XL and capacitive reactance XC. We know the following formulae for calculating the values of these reactances. XL is equal to J omega L and XC is equal to 1 upon J omega C. These formulae are useful for designing electrical networks. Have a look at the calculations involved in the solution of the problem mentioned here. The problem reads like this, determine the value of capacitance C and inductance L which will offer reactance of 20 ohm at a frequency of 1 gigahertz. The solution is as shown. The table shows some values of inductive and capacitive reactance X at 1 gigahertz and the approximate values of corresponding inductance L and capacitance C. 
These values can be used for setting and solving numerical problems related with impedance of different types of networks. Consider the network as shown where ZAB is real. Here, the impedances Z1 and Z2 connecting network terminals AB and the load with impedance ZL are to be selected in such a way that the terminal impedance ZAB will have the desired value for the given load impedance ZL. Can we not use a piece of transmission line of proper length between the terminal ends AB of the network and the load so as to have the desired terminal impedance ZAB for the given value of load? The question is right and very nice. A question may arise in your mind simply because we know that impedance of a transmission line at a point varies with the distance of the point from the load. Let us see a simple problem to answer this question. The statement of the problem is as shown. A pro sorry cut. <coughs> Slide number 35. The statement of the problem is as shown. A lossless transmission line of characteristic impedance 50 ohm is terminated in the load with impedance 50 plus 50 j ohm. Is it possible that at some point W along the line, the line impedance will be real with magnitude of 60 ohm? One may try to get the answer analytically for determining the value of D so as to obtain impedance Z at D equal to 60 ohm. Use of Smith chart gives the answer just impossible within a very short time. For this, you have to calculate and plot the normalized load impedance ZL on the Smith chart. Draw VSWR circle which intersects the diameter AOB at any two points P1 and P2 giving real values of normalized impedance namely Z1 is equal to 0.38 and Z2 is equal to 2.6. From this we get Z is equal to Z1 into Z0 that is 19 ohm and also Z is equal to Z2 into Z0 that is 130 ohm. Thus, we understand that 19 ohm and 130 ohm are the only possible real values of the line impedance which are different than 60 ohm. Hence, it is impossible to have the real impedance as real with magnitude of 60 ohm in the given problem. If you try to get the answer analytically for determining the value of D so as to obtain ZD is equal to 60 ohm, the calculations will be as shown. Here we note that D comes out to be imaginary. Hence, we conclude that it is not possible to get real value of the line impedance as 60 ohm for the given load anywhere along the transmission line. Note that Smith chart avoids such complexity arising in analytical method. L-type reactive networks play an important role in transferring a given load impedance ZL into effective impedance ZAB across the terminals AB of the network. Here with proper choice of Z1 and Z2, we can obtain desired ZAB equal to A plus BJ. How to obtain Z1 and Z2? Is it possible to determine Z1 and Z2 analytically? The answer is yes. However, the analytical method is little cumbersome. Let ZL is equal to R plus ZX, ZAB is equal to A plus BJ, and Z1 is equal to CJ, and Z2 is equal to DJ Ohm. Then we can derive the following relations between A, B, C, D, R, and X as shown. For given values of A, B, R, and X, we can obtain the pair of numbers C, D, which will satisfy both these equations simultaneously. For example, consider the following circuit. Here C equal to minus 108.9 and D equal to 76.92 result in the desired impedance Z, A, B is equal to 150 minus 75 J ohm. One can imagine how cumbersome the numerical computation might be. 
the relations for a and b stated earlier can be simplified further to discuss some special cases for example in the network under consideration if z a b is to be real then one of the easiest way is to select c equal to 2r and d is equal to minus r plus x with this choice we obtain a equal to 2r that is real for example consider the following network here we get a equal to 200 ohm as z a b let us discuss one more problem in connection with l type network consisting of an inductor and a capacitor which will give the impedance z a b between the terminals a and b for the given value of load impedance z l at a given frequency f as shown in the network here z l and z a b are given z1 is also given and we are expected to determine z2 assuming normalizing impedance z0 equal to 50 ohm the various impedances can be computed as shown in the table note that z2 is to be determined with these values the given circuit in the normalized impedance form will be as shown note the various admittances their symbols and values involved in the solution of the problem under consideration see the table for admittances using these values of normalized admittances shown in the table the given circuit cut <coughs> slide number 46 using these values of normalized admittances shown in the table the given circuit can be drawn as shown from the circuit we can write the main equation involving admittances as shown namely yt is equal to y1 plus y with y is equal to 1 upon z and z is equal to z1 plus z2 the sequence of calculations to be done then can be written as shown as seen from the sequential operations we understand that the solution of the problem under consideration involves many operations with admittances we can show the calculations to be done in sequence in a tabular form thus finally we have z2 is equal to minus 20 j ohm which represents a capacitive reactance with due consideration of given frequency of 1 gigahertz one can calculate the value of this capacitance as 15.915 picofarad while for z1 is equal to 20 j ohm representing inductive reactance we obtain the inductance value as 3.183 nano henry it be noted that we have seen how to find z1 z2 so that we will get the desired zab for a given load impedance zl the question is can we design a network such that zl and zb are interchangeable to answer this question we should know about something more let us discuss about it in the next module for the time being let us have a stop here well friends as a summary we can remember that smith chart is a very powerful tool to graphically estimate various types of transmission line quantities such as reflection coefficient transmission coefficient vswr etc switch chart is generally impedance chart however when we use it as admittance chart constant r circle becomes constant g circles constant x circles becomes constant susceptance circles that is y circles the circular distance over a complete circle is lambda by 2 the impedance repeats at a interval of lambda by 2 the half right radius of the unit circle is used to measure vswr normalized resistance vmax etc on the other side the left half of the radius is used to measure the normalized resistance 1 upon vswr etc out of the circular scales we can measure 
the phase angle of the transmission coefficient from the second circle. The distances along the transmission line can be measured in terms of wavelengths by using the fourth circle towards the generator and towards the load that is the point which you have to note while measuring the distances. These distances are measured in terms of wavelength. The power measurement and the losses related to it in terms of dB can also be measured from the horizontal scales. The magnitude of reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient, VSWR etcetera can be measured from the set of four horizontal lines. In general, various portions of Smith chart should be understood first. Thank you.